Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to line your baking tin. Now, this may not be the most exciting video. However, I wish I knew how to properly line my baking tins because it is such an important detail when it comes to baking because if they're not lined properly, you can result in a failed bake and we don't want that. Now, in my new book that is coming out, I do have a whole chapter about how to line your cake tin. So that's how important it is. So I'm gonna show you four different tins of different shapes and the best way to line them. So I'm going to start off with a regular round cake tin. So this is the tin that I use the most. And what I always want to do is brush a thin layer of butter or oil on the base and sides of the cake tin and then put the paper on top. I think that butter makes the paper stick better, but as long as there's some sort of grease on there, it should do the trick. So I've got a bit of melted butter here with a brush and I'm just gonna brush a thin layer of butter on the base and around the sides. Anywhere you're going to stick the paper. Now it's important not to add too much because it can affect the greasiness of your cake as well. And then you also get a mess once it's baked. So just a thin layer will do. Now it's time for the paper. So I've got some baking paper here. Now I prefer buying sheets of baking paper rather than ready rolled because the ready rolled stuff keeps rolling up when you're trying to use it. So the sheets actually stay flat. So I want to cut a circle. Now you can trace around a tin, but if you're doing several tins, then it's gonna take some time. So I've got a trick to show you exactly how to cut a perfect circle every time. So I'm going to line up the paper and cut where it's roughly the same width as the tin. So about here. Cut a strip like this. And now I'm going to form a square and cut again at the same width of the tin. Now, I'm only doing one tin, but if you're doing several, then you could do several layers of paper and do the exact same thing. So now what I'm going to do is fold the paper in half. And there's gonna be a close side and an open side. I'm gonna keep my thumb where the close side is and fold it in half again. Now you have a fully closed side and a fully open side. So the important bit is this closed edge here. That's where you want to be holding it and folding the paper. I'm gonna fold it again from that closed corner. So you form a triangle and then again from that closed corner. So you get an even thinner triangle. So now what I'm gonna do is measure roughly the radius of the cake tin, which is about here and trim it off. So when I open it out, it should form a perfect circle-ish and fit exactly in the cake tin. So you can put it straight inside. And if it overlaps the corners, that's absolutely fine. The butter will make it stick. Like that. So your cake is not gonna to stick to that base of the tin. Now I'm just going to cut some strips from the remaining piece of paper and place it around the side of the tin. Now you don't want these strips too tall because what can happen is that if the strips are taller than the cake and then you out turn the cake, it's going to squash because the cake isn't as tall. I try and get it more or less to the same height of the tin. So for the last one, I just measure around, tear off whatever I don't need, place it in, and there you have it, a perfectly lined tin. So just think of it like this, any exposed tin means you're at risk of your cake sticking. So that's why I do the base and the sides. Now let's move on to the square. So here I've got a square tin. Same again, I want to brush a thin layer of butter over the base and up the sides. Now, I usually bake my brownies in square tins, but I've done cakes as well. Either way, I always line it with butter and paper. Now, instead of cutting out a square and then strips, which you can, of course, do, 
I like to do the following. I place the paper down and put the square tin on top. By the way, this works really well with the loaf tin as well. And then gonna get the scissors and then cut towards each corner diagonally. Remove the paper and then I'm going to place the paper on top and all I'm going to do is push the paper inwards and where I've cut should start to fold. So the important thing here is to get that base nice and flat and then the corners overlap each other because that's where I've cut. And all you need to do now is kind of move the paper around until you get a flat surface and these overlapping corners. And this ensures that you can get a really tight fit with the paper in those corners. Nice and snug inside. And now I'm just going to cut away these excess flapping bits of paper by cutting vertically downwards. If you end up exposing a bit too much tin once you've cut it, you can always go in with a small amount of paper and I like to put it under the flap of paper that's already there, place it in and stick it back because that butter you've put in there is helping. And you're welcome to cut these excess paper off, use them for another tin or you can just fold them over the side because it does help get whatever you've baked out again. So there's your square tin. So one of the hardest shapes to line is a circular tin. So if you make lots of shaped cakes, such as footballs or like half domes, you still want to line your round cake tin. So I'm just gonna place it on this ring so it doesn't move around. And again, you want to put some butter in because that's what's going to stick the paper down. Now some people use a butter and flour mix to stop their cake from sticking. I think that the paper actually gives the cake this extra barrier from burning because the metal gets extremely hot and the paper just makes the cake not get that hot, if that makes sense. So I always prefer doing the paper method. So I'll get a piece of paper and I'll trim it because it's slightly rectangle at the moment. And I want to go on with a similar technique that I did on the square tin. So it means cutting some lines and making them fold when you put it into the tin. So I'm gonna start at the corners, but this time go more towards the center. And I'm constantly using the tin underneath as a guide. So I've done the four corners. Now I want to go in between and cut even more. Now, if you're using a thicker paper than I am, you can then cut one more time in between each triangle. I think this is enough for me though. You just want enough so it does have some flexibility. So I've cut into the paper eight times, so now I want to push into the tin. And as I push, hopefully these folds will cross over, which is exactly what I'm looking for. So focusing on the center. There we go, that actually fell in really nicely. Push that bottom part in, and then carefully work your way upwards and make those pieces of paper fold on top of each other and stick to the butter. So some may have misaligned, so just help them get back and start working your way upwards. If you feel like the paper's not sticking, you can go on with some more butter and put it on underneath. Especially where the paper's overlap. And now I'm just going to cut off the excess of paper to neaten it up. And there's the round tin done, ready for the cake to go inside. So the final cake tin I'm gonna demonstrate is with this donut tray. So this could be used if you're using madeleines or another shape that comes in a muffin form. It's not too big like a larger cake. 
and it's too difficult to start cutting the paper into those exact shapes. So what you need for this is some butter and some flour. So even though I wouldn't use this on a larger cake, the smaller cakes are fine because they're not in the oven for that long. What I want to do is start off with a layer of butter in each shape. So I'm going with my brush and I'm using donuts here, but like I said, it works with any other shape. And I'm swirling the butter around, making sure it's on all the sides of the shape. Now it's really important that you don't want big blobs of butter here because that can affect your bake, especially because the shapes are so small. And once it's covered in butter, now you sprinkle on some flour. So just plain flour here and sprinkle it in each part of the tray. And then I'm going to tap it and move it in all the directions. I'm actually going to put some paper underneath because it will catch anything. And all that flour is getting stuck to that butter now. And once you feel like it's had a good coating of flour, I'm going to flip it and give it another tap to remove all the excess flour. There. And you can see that the tin is perfectly coated and now it's going to protect anything that's going on inside. Now you've got all this excess flour on this piece of paper that you can just collect and put back into your container. So four different tins lined perfectly ready for baking. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Like I said, I wish I had this tutorial when I started out. Hopefully this will save some of your bakes. If you try this technique out, let me know how it goes for you. And in the meantime, subscribe to my channel, like and comment on this video and see you soon for more tutorials.